Hi everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. In previous video, we have understood about useful SKU concept, which was a part of timing fixes in the design. In this video, we will understand further about useful SKU, which is used as concept of concurrent clock and data optimization. Previously, we have seen that generally while doing the timing fixes, tool is going to use these type of approaches for fixing setup or hold. But as the technology becomes complex more and more, you will see that very commonly the concept of useful SKU is also being used. We already understood useful SKU concept in previous video, but by any chance, if you still have any doubt, we are going to take an example now for better understanding. If you have already understood the concept well, then please take this example as an exercise for you and let us see if you get the same answer. As always, we would love to hear from you the, about this answer in the comment section. To begin with, let us assume some values here. So if you see T clock is 1 nanoseconds, setup time for all the flops is 50 picoseconds and your TCQ is 80 picoseconds. Combo 1 delay, so this is your combo 1, it is 920 picoseconds. Your TCQ was 80 picoseconds for he, this flop and this is your launch flop for T combo 1. So in this case, if we try to calculate your arrival time, let's say, so arrival time will be your clock latency, but here if we have taken the uncertainty as zero for the ease of calculation, then what we can say is directly it will come to your clock pin. So from clock pin to TCQ, it will be 80 picoseconds plus 920 picoseconds. And by now you would have already calculated that it is 1000 picoseconds. Now your required time. Required time is your T, uh, T clock. So T clock is your one nanoseconds that is equivalent to 1000 picoseconds minus your T setup. So T setup is your 50 picoseconds and after that you have minus uncertainty portion. But in this case we do not have any uncertainty. So it will be 0 picoseconds and it will be 950 picoseconds. Slack if you have already calculated it will come out to be minus 50 picoseconds. Why? Because it is RT minus 80 and that will be 950 minus 1000. This was the case for your T combo 1. So this is your T combo 1. Now let us calculate for T combo 2. In that case, this flop becomes the launch flop. And at that time, we again do not have any uncertainty. That means latency till that point is we have taken as let's say 0. In this case, we have assumed both of the cases. We have assumed that clock latency is 0 for the ease of calculation only. So arrival time is let's say we have arrival time now how much it will be so tcq is 80 picoseconds and then again t combo 2 that will be 810 picoseconds and it will be coming out to be 890 picoseconds and again required time will be almost similar why because t clock is same and then t setup is also same we do not have taken any uncertainty so that is again 950 picoseconds slack if you calculate it will come out to be 950 minus 890 picoseconds that will be 60 picoseconds now if you observe that slack is plus 60 picoseconds in this path and slack was minus 50 picoseconds in this particular path. Now let's say if you want to make use of useful skew concept, so clock latency will not be zero in that case. What will happen is this is your capture flop for T combo one. So in that particular case, what will happen is this capture clock, it will add 50 picoseconds or whatever the push it can do for pushing this clock so that this this particular latency is increased by the amount that is your slack violation. In that case, what will happen is your clock network delay for this particular FF2, this FF2 50 picoseconds, it will add. And when it will add, what will happen is your T clock, it will minus this, but here it will add your 50 picoseconds. It will not be zero. It will add 50 picoseconds of latency in this case. Why? Because you can say that now uncertainty is not zero. If you calculate the skew, it will be 50 minus zero that will be 50 picoseconds. So that particular skew that will add in this case. And hence you will see that you have 50 picoseconds of addition and slack will come to zero in this particular case for T combo one. So this path is now met, but what will happen in the second path is if you see now clock network delay is added. 
so you can either add it in this case uh, arrival time you can add or you can subtract it in the required time why because now skew is minus 50 either you do the minus 50 skew in uh, required time or you can do the clock network delay addition to the t combo path so arrival time will increase now by 50 picoseconds so if your arrival time is increasing it will come up to 940 picoseconds and in this case what will happen is you will not have you will you will not have requ uh, slack like this this value will change now required time will remain same slack will change to 950 minus 890 instead of that 940 and this then slack will come to 10 picoseconds by default in EDA tools concurrent clock and data optimization happens and if we want to disable there are options available to do so it applies to all the path groups by default and we can ask the tool not to optimize certain path if needed and changing clock latencies can balance the slack in successive timing path stages to optimize concurrent clock and data paths this capability can reduce total negative slack worse negative slack and leakage power also that is all for this video we will come up with more concepts in further videos till then please do like share and subscribe to the channel and do give your important feedback in the comment section thank you